Good evening, everyone. We continue our study in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3. And um, by way of a review, I think it would be interesting for us to recognize uh, that there were many wives of David and he had many children. And we are told uh, that he had a number of children while he was still king uh, in Hebron. Now, one of the important uh, personalities that I think we ought to remember at this juncture is Yoav and his brother Avishai and Asahel, right? And you find that Asahel was killed by Avna. And today, when we continue in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3, uh, we are told of a revenge on Avner, on the death of Asahel. Now, from here, you can find that many of the sons of David were born in Hebron. And then there was another large group of them that were born in Jerusalem. And we will talk about that when we get to chapter 5. Now, know that Yoav, he is the general in David's army, as well as in uh, Solomon's army. And he was executed by Solomon later on, we will see in uh, 1 Kings chapter 2, when we complete 2 Samuel. But notice, Yoav is the son of Zeruiah. And with that, we had talked about this in 1 Samuel, uh, in chapter 16, when we talked about the possibility that David had a mother who is not the same mother as the other brothers. Now, that's one of the views that I had highlighted. And hence that we get a glimpse of the fact that David was uh, hated by the brothers until he was anointed king. And so I just want to highlight to you that uh, David is the brother of Zuriah. And uh, it was suggested, right? It was suggested that it was from another wife of Jesse. So that's one of the, uh, the, the uh, views. Uh, and Nahash being an Ammonite king, possibly. That's why I put a question mark. Now, some others would say that Nahash is Jesse, another name for Jesse. That would be another view of that. So for now, just bear this in mind. David and Yoav are related. And Yoav is the nephew of David. So let's continue in 2 Samuel chapter 3, reading from verse 22 onwards. By way of review, we left off at verse 21, and it was a good time when Avner came to David and they had this agreement. They set out a covenant that Avner would bring the all Israel to him so that he can do whatever he wants with both Judah and Israel. And so he is about to leave and says, let me set out and go and gather all Israel to my Lord, the king. Now, all Israel being everybody or all the other tribes, less Judah, so that they may make a covenant with you and that you may be king over all that your soul desires. And David let Afna go, and he went in Shalom. Now, that was where we left off. In verse 22, we begin to see that there is a different agenda from Yoav. So it says, Behold the servants of David and Yoav. So we have Yoav and the troops came from a raid 
and they brought a large amount of plunder with them. Now, those days when you go to raid or go for a battle and you win, you take back all the spoils. And so this is the plunder. Now, at this point in time, we know that Afna had left. So Afna was, Afna was not with David in Hebron because he had let him go and he had gone in Shalom. So remember this word. There was peace among them because they had settled what they are to do. In verse 23, when Yoav and all the army that was with him, him would be Yoav. We always need to know all these pronouns. When Yoav came in, now they means they who were there, could be the army, the people who whom did not go with Yoav. And they informed uh, Yoav or they reported. I would say this would be a good word to use. They reported to Yoav saying this. says, Avner, the son of Ner, came to see the king. And this would be David. And he has let him go and he has gone in peace. Now he is David. Him is Avner. Right? And he is Avner. Has gone in Shalom. What this tells Joab is this seems to be a missed opportunity. Joab, you need to remember, had a brother, uh, Asahel, uh, and he pursued Afner, and Afner killed him, stabbed him uh, in the fifth rib. And so at the back of Joab's mind, Afner is an enemy. So in the mind of Yoav. So Avner is enemy. Why? Because he killed his brother, Asahel. Always have this at the back of your mind. And so Yoav turns out to be someone that is like a loose cannon. Verse 24, Yoav came to the king. The king would be David. And he said to David, says, what have you done? Behold, Avner came to you. Why then have you let him go? So that he is already gone. Uh, and this idea already gone uh, the Hebrew is quite interesting. He says he has uh, that he walked and then he walked and walking. So, uh, and he walked walking. So what this means is he has definitely left. He has walked far away already. So this, this is how the translator is trying to use these words, which we would understand in the modern day. But in the ancient day, the expression is, why did you uh, let him go? Now this word, let him go, uh, really means, why did you uh, send him off? Send him away. So the idea here is not quite the same as let him go. Uh, because in, in verse 23, um, exactly him, this let him go. Let me just highlight this. Let him go. And this word, let him go, is the same. The idea here is, why did you send him away? And as you can recall in that conversation, they already came to an agreement. They came to terms. And so 
Asner was not just merely going away, but the terminology here is David had sent him off to settle all Israel to make a covenant with David. So that, that would be the idea. Although in actual essence, we see that Avner walked away and, uh, and David did not stop him. But the text actually says that David had, had sent him away so that he would do what he had said with all Israel. Now, in verse 25, Yoav was really upset with David. Now, it's very interesting because not only that Yoav is a general, he's still subject to the king. But yet, if you look at his statements, he is very bold. He says, you know, Avner, the son of Ner, that he came to gain your confidence. Now, 25 really says that the idea of gain your confidence uh, is to deceive you. Deceive you. He has an ulterior motive. Uh, it also implies that David is naive to listen to Afner. This is the word here. It gives us that kind of, a, of an uh, understanding that Yoav, this is Yoav speaking, is totally unhappy with David. He thinks that David is naive. He thinks that Avner has come to trick David to figure out, and this word here, uh, to learn, to learn, uh, is to know, right? Uh, to learn is about to know or to gain knowledge. To gain knowledge. It, it's good. And so that is what the translators mean by to learn. Afner, or according to Yoav, that Afner really wants to come and and figure out where you are, how you are going in, uh, and, and to know uh, where you are going out and how you are coming in means in the modern day English to gain knowledge of David's ins and outs. That's the concept, meaning where is, where is he coming from? Where is he going? And then again here, to find out, to find out is also the same word that is to learn. These are the same words. To learn everything that you are doing, whatever you are performing. And so when Yoav became so angry with uh, David by expressing that David is so naive, being king and he can be tricked by Avner. Now, remember, in the mind of Yoav, Avner is truly the enemy. And he believes that. Verse 26, when Yoav left, left David's presence, uh, from the idea here is Yoav, uh, go out. And the word here is from with David. And so it's translated as David's presence. But idea here is Yoav left from that conversation where he was standing with David. And he left. He went out. And then he sent messengers after Avner. So we need to learn some of these words here. The word sent is exactly the same as how David was said to have let uh, Avner go. This is to send for Avner. Means uh, to, how should we say, 
to 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 send away the messengers, and these messengers, uh, it is really the malak. Remember what we always talk about malak to represent uh, Yoav and to go after Avner and to present him with the message. And they brought him back from the well of Sirah. Now, what Sirah is thorns, uh, a place where there are thorns. And, it, and so with thorns, it leads one to turn back. And so from that well, they brought him back to Avna, but David did not know. Now, this is important because this is also talking about the innocence of David. Everything we read now is actually done by Yoav. In verse 27, so when Avna, he uh, return uh, Shuv to Hebron right? this is to Shuv to Hebron Yoav took him aside into the middle of the gate to speak with him privately and this one we need to uh, talk about a little bit now took him aside uh means to cause him to turn, uh, cause him to turn, took him aside, cause him to turn. What this means is when he was, when Avner was coming into Hebron, uh, he had a particular destination. Yoav then directed him to the middle of the gate. The middle of the gate in, in I guess in what we may need to understand is the gates is a place where people congregate uh, to judge. And so in this particular case uh, Yoav and Afna uh, went to the middle of the gate and Yoav spoke with him and this word here is in private, or it says here quietly. That's the picture that we are given. As they spoke, uh, he struck him. And this would be Yoav striking Avner. And it says there, in the belly. I think this would be in the abdomen. And usually when it says abdomen, this is also the fifth rib. It also refers to the fifth rib. So in exactly the same place that Asahel was struck, uh, Avner was struck in the same way. And he died, now this word here, uh, in the blood. Of course, it's translated on account of the blood. The Hebrew words is in the blood. And so what we see that this is a revenge. Revenge of Asahel. And this is done by Yoav. Yoav was not about to let go. It right? was not about to let go. In verse 28, it says, Afterward, when David heard uh, about this, he said, Immediately, I and my kingdom are innocent before the Lord, 
forever of the blood of Aphner, the son of Ner, that David and his kingdom means the rest of the people. They are innocent. The idea of innocent means free from guilt. Right? Uh, means that no punishment. Because there is a killing. So David and the people is now declared as, uh, how would you say? We say that they are blameless, right? For this heinous act of killing Aphna. And so this word is crucial because there is no blood in the hands of David and the people for killing Aphna. So this is important for us to realize that at this point in time, Yoav acted all on his own. Verse 29, it goes that may it turn upon the head of Yoav and all his father's house. Um, is an A and this is the B. Uh, what it means that may it turn, may it remain, may, may it stay, or may it would be the punishment. And so what we find then in the corresponding text here uh, would be the curses. Not the punishment, but the curses. Right. And so when it says this, may it turn upon the head of your arm would be May it, the punishment, remain or the guilt, right? That would be a better way of saying, may the guilt re be on the head of your arm because he is the one who struck Avner and it would be on all his father's house. And what would this guilt bring? This list of curses, you know, the list of curses. And uh, that would be one who, suffers a, a flow of blood, a skin disease, uh, uh, a physical uh, physical limitations, a physical uh, injury, uh, one who would be killed by someone else in a, in a, uh, in a battle. And the sufficiency, the insufficiency of, or the lack uh, of food. And so all of these would be a list of curses, not an active action done by David, but it would be, is pronounced upon Joab that as time goes on, uh, whatever he has done will not be forgotten by God. And so it closes itself in verse 39. So verse 30, we find that Yoav and his brother Avishai killed Avner because he had put their brother Asahel to death in the battle at Gibeon. And so this is clear that there is a life for a life. And this is uh, the, the, the reaction, right? Uh, from the uh, revenge or the, uh, the vengeance of Yoav and his brother for the death of Asahel. And only one life was, uh, was paid for. Now, observe how David feels for Afner. Then David said to Yoav and to all the people who were with him that was supporting him and I would say mislead Afner to come back and so that Yoav could kill him. So all of these were guilty. Uh, but because David had sought negation over the punishment, David wanted them to mourn 
for after. So it says, tear your clothes, put on sackcloth, mourn before Avner, and the king walked behind the bier. And what does the 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 bier here? Uh, this I I would say that this would be the the couch that held Avner. And this would be a funeral procession. So all of this is a sign of mourning. And in place of punishment, Yoav and all the people are to mourn for him. And that, that's the important thing. And then in verse 32, and they buried Avner in Hebron. And this is an honor. This is where David is ruling. And the king raised his voice and wept. This is a lament. Raised his voice and wept. This is an A and a B. And this is done at the grave of Avner, and all the people wept. This is also a national mourning. Something that's given to a hero, wouldn't it? So let's take a look at verse 33. 33 and 34 gives us a picture of how David portrays Avner. In verse 33, the king sang a song of mourning for Avner. Uh, I think we would need to understand that this idea here, sing a song of mourning, is more of a chant of lamentation. Lamentation is always uh, the, 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 the chant. The, the, to chant would be a verb. And the product of the chant is the noun. So they are chanting the chant or they are lamenting the lamentation. And that would be the picture of this particular uh, phrase. David is not singing a song like uh, modern day, right? And this is really a lament. This is to mourn. This is not to celebrate. And it is to remember Avner. It says, should Avner die as a fool die? Now, a fool means someone who is senseless. And so the idea here, the question would be, should Avner die a senseless, worthless, meaningless death. That is the question. It says, your hands were not bound, nor your feet put in bronze shackles. He was not a prisoner. As one falls before the wicked, you have fallen. Now, in verse 34, as one falls uh, before the wicked, uh, it really says falls means to be, be killed. Right? You have fallen. As one who, I would say, um, fall to the face of the son of wickedness, and this would be uh, this would be avla. Avla really means uh, in unjust. The unjust. You have fallen. And it's to say that this would, this, this death of Afna, this death of Afna,
is very unfortunate. This is not the way uh, uh, a hero should die, right? And so this is a sad ending to uh, a great person. And all the people wept over him again. Verse 35. It says that all the people came to provide food for David while it was still day. And so here we can say that David was fasting. Meaning he, he, he wasn't eating. But David vowed, saying, this whole idea of vow, um, and it's a very serious statement. Swore, I think, would be an equivalent word. And, the, and, and, and swearing means this is so serious that if it's, uh, if it's defied, then somebody's going to die. May God do so to me and more so if I taste bread or anything else before the sun goes down. And I guess you can say that David is very fixed on fasting until the day is over. Now, this picture here would show that he is in mourning. Uh, he is not eating. Uh, he is fasting. And he has chosen to do that uh, until the end of the day. And remember, this is not just anyone. This is the king of Judah, right? The king of Judah. And so now all the people took note of David's swearing, right? And it pleased them just as everything that the king did pleased all the people. Now this word, pleased, it is a very important statement. Uh, please them, please all the people. This word literally means good or tov in the eyes of, right? In the eyes of the people. So when the people look at David, they are saying, Yes, this is good that David uh, is showing a great example of mourning for a hero. Uh, that, that, that is how they are looking at David. And it says that in verse 36, practically anything that David did thrilled the people. So the people were like 100% behind David. We now come towards the end of our chapter today. So it says, all the people and all Israel. So we can see this is an A and a B. All the people, all Israel. I would say that this would be both Judah and Israel. And this would be all Israel. Right? All 12 tribes. So we look at the context and it shows us uh, that they understood. Now this word understood comes from the word know. They perceive. Uh, and what else can you say about this word? Uh, they, they, they can, they recognize, right? They recognize. Uh, they admit because of what they know, right? So the word understood comes with all these other meanings that all the people, all Israel recognize, perceive, admit, understood exactly what happened on that day that it had not been that it had not been from the king to put Afner the, uh, the son of Ner to the death well this word is implied but 
it does mean that it had not been the intent of the king. And by this, the king is innocent. So again, the whole world knows, the whole world being Israel. So it's not enough to have just a few of them in the closed circle. Uh, in Hebrew culture, it must not only be thought of as innocent, it must be understood or know as innocent, right? Know as innocent, to perceive, to recognize, admit, and basically publicly acknowledged. After all, David is the king of Israel. So the things that he does, uh, as innocent as it may be, had to be seen uh, in the light of the eyes of all the people that David is truly innocent of taking the life of another person. Verse 38 and 39. Then the king said to his servants, the king being David, said to his servants, Do you not know that a leader and a great man has fallen in Israel today? Now note, this is a tribute. All right, a tribute to Avner. And so let us pick apart some of these words, right? That he is a leader, a Tsar. And that he is a great man. Uh, and in this case, one who is Gadol. What does that mean? He is great. He is important. All right? Uh, he has uh, he is noble because Avner came to make David king to bring all Israel to David to 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 unify the nation right to unify the nation after the death of Saul. so And, and that is a noble, important, uh, great leader. right? He's a great leader and a great man. So it's not just uh, any person. So a leader is an A, a great man is a B, basically to tell us that the, the role that Avner did, uh, the, the position that Avner took is... Uh, it is is beyond reproach. Uh, that is a, a a sign of nobility. He did the noble thing, and he has died in Israel this day. Now, I understand Israel is the name of the nation, and this would be the nation, no longer just northern. So, mark the this word and that. Avner is treated as a very important man as compared to Asahel. As you notice, Asahel was never given a hero's funeral, uh, but Avner was. And now these are things that we need to pay attention in verse 39 as we come to a close. He says, And I am weak today. Though anointed king, second part, these men, sons of uh, Zeruiah, they are too difficult for me. What does difficult mean? Final phrase. May the Lord repay the evildoer in proportion to his evil. So let's break this down a little bit before we come to a close. First, this is the admission. This is a confession. A confession of David. 
So maybe this verse may shatter some of our opinions of David, but this is the reality at this particular point in time. Joab has shown his cards to be one who is very powerful. So the word here is tender. I am weak today. I am tender. Uh, I am weak of heart. Right? Weak of heart. Uh, what else is there? Uh, I am soft. Right? This is a, another word that you can use. That David says, I am soft-hearted. Even though I am anointed king, even though I have been uh, mashuk, right? And that he is the Mashiach. Yes, I am the king. I am the Mashiach. I've been anointed. But these men, who are these men? The sons of Zeruiah. And this would be Yoav, Abishai. They are too difficult for me. Now, this word is uh, kashe, and the word difficult. Difficult here means they are very fierce. They are very intense. They are stubborn. Uh, they are hard. They are cruel. What else can we say? Uh, they are, well, I could say they are stiff. So these are all the words for this particular word, difficult. So David is saying, I am soft-hearted. I'm tender-hearted. Uh, I, 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 did not want the vengeance to take place. It is not the right thing to do. Even though I am king, I have my desire. Well, these other men here, the sons of Zeruiah, uh, they, they have a mind of their own. And so the description here is that these sons of Zeruiah, they are fierce, they're intense, they're stubborn, they're hard, they're cruel, they're stiff, and it's very difficult to handle them. So in closing, may the Lord repay. The word repay here comes from the word shalem. Like in recompense, pay back. I think we use the word pay back. And pay back who? Pay back... Uh, the evildoer, the evildoer is actually in Hebrew, uh, the one, the one doing evil. And remember, evil is in the sight of the beholder. And so if the beholder is God, and so God says, what you are doing is wrong. And so God will pay back. Then in terms of payback here, that would be the punishment, wouldn't it? In proportion to his evil. Now this word, in proportion to uh, his evil, this is one whole phrase. Uh, to make evil as evil. The word here is as evil. And it does mean in proportion to. Because this is justice. Remember, the law had the, the justice, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. And may the Lord shalem, the one doing ra, right, or ra'ah, uh, as the ra that he is, as the ra that he's doing. And so God's judgment here is expected to be fair. And so in the eyes of David, David sees God as a just God. 
that his law is perfect, his law is just, and that for the punishment of the evil that this person has done, God will punish only as much as the evil that God sees in his eyes and no more. And this tells us in, in a nutshell, God is just, his punishment is just, there will be payback at the due time and it will be equal to what he has done. And so later on in the book of uh, First Kings, we will see Yoav being killed as well, since he killed Avner. And so we, we, we actually see this play out. It's not that God made it happen, but God's judgment came about where he allowed the, the, the actions of men to play out. And in so doing, yes, Yoav was also killed. Now with this, we come to the end of our session today.